name Nawal Kumsiya from Beit Sahur, Palestine. In that time, I was very um, depressed and I was thinking of committing suicide. And I went to my, my friend's home to discuss what's the easy way to do it. And they knocked the door and they told me about Jesus. I didn't accept right away because I didn't believe in the first time. So I had, I had, um, I asked Jesus, if you real, if you exist, do this to me. Show me this. Do me th this to me. I was, I can't sleep. So I, I used to take bills and even with bills, like five or six bills, I never slept. I all the time, I wake up crying. Why, why this life? Why this? Why this happen? I don't know what caused that depression, but I was in a very deep depression. And I didn't no notice that. I didn't know what, that I have this. In, this. in this time, I said, if you're real, God, if you're real, if you hear my voice, if you know things about me, give me to sleep this night without bills. So I went to bed. I wake up in the morning, and the sun was rising, and it's all... I slept all the night. I said, oh, maybe this is uh, by, by uh, coincidence, you know? So I try again. I said, um, if you're real, if you exist, if you hear my voice, uh, give me peace. And that's what happened. I, I start feeling peace. I start feeling uh, happiness. I start feeling more freedom. I get, I get healed from the depression, from all kinds of sickness, but it's, um, uh, anything, uh, physically and uh, psychologically and everything. So he proved himself to me. He's a life God and he's a God of miracles and he loves me. And I start loving him, loving my life, loving everybody and everything. In that time, I get sick. I get sick, um, uh, like um, almost paralyzed. And I went to the doctor. It's arthritis. It's very, very uh, hard sickness. And he said, no, there's no medicine for you. So you have to deal with the sickness. And I start, I start praying. Um, I didn't know even how to pray in that time. So I... Uh, I was sick, very, very, very sick. I can't even do uh, my duty. I went to bed and I said, God, you, till now, you prove yourself to me as a life and loving God. And I want to ask you, if this is your will for me to be sick, I will accept it and I will thank you. But if it's not your will, so please heal me. And usually in the night, I can't move from side to side. I can't, I can't get up. I can't, I need help all the time. And in the morning, I didn't feel any pain in the night. In the morning, I just wake up and I just stand and went, I was walking to the bathroom and I noticed myself, there's no pain. I am doing very fine and I was, Oh my God, everybody wake up, I get healed, I get healed. And I was crying and I was laughing, I was jumping. I did everything like excitement. So all my children, my husband came and they said, wow, it's really there is a life God. And he healed me since that. I never had this pain or sickness again. So it's, all my life is miracle after miracle after miracle. But we have the clashes and the, the demonstration in that street. One of the boys throw stones on a soldier's uh, jeep. And he ran away from the front of my home and disappeared. Soldiers think it was my, ch my children. So they break the house. They break the door and they come into the house. They drag my, my children, my first, my uh, oldest boy. And his friend, they, they was in the home. And even he was in the bathroom. He was in, he was in the bathroom. And they drag him from the bathroom. And he drag his friend down to the area, uh, the square. And they start beating him. Uh, eight soldiers, big and strong. And they have in stakes. And they have in uh, this, uh, what do you call it, something, uh, boomer or something they wear in their hands. And I run. I try to help. Oh, please, please, please do something. This, they didn't, I didn't know why they beating them. I did, there's no reason. I didn't know what was happening in the street. 
but um, they, they said, stay away, stay away. And they was beating me too in my chest with a gun and in my, in my back, in my legs, everywhere. Stay away, stay away. And I was screaming, Jesus, Jesus, please, Jesus, please. Because I saw them beating them in a way like they almost going to die. So uh, he said, stop calling that name. I had that name. I had that name. And he beat me again. And in the end, because the, that sticks break, in the end, he took his gun and he, my, my son was out uh, in fainting. He, almost, you know, he's not out of conscious he was he's almost want to die or something to faint I don't know but he took the gun he said I will come to three if you did not get up to your house I will kill you right now and um, he wasn't able to move so I was screaming Jesus Jesus help him and he said I will come to three one so my son start crawling on his hands and link with his friend and legs he didn't even uh, concentrate where to go and he get to the stairs, it's like 10 stairs, and get into the house, both of them, and faint, out of conscious. And I didn't know what to do. I was standing over them. So I went to the fridge, took our cold water and started to put water on their faces. And thank God my son opened his eyes and he said, Mom, I'm still alive. Every time I went to bed, I had that scene like movie, Satan uses all the beatings. It's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's, not, it's not human uh, beatings. It's very, very hard beatings. This is my son. You watch my son beat, have, you know, beat it that way. It's very, very, very uh, hard. That feelings take me away from God. I, I stop loving him that much. I stop having this intimi in, in, intimacy with him because I feel, I feel like he's not uh, God of justice. He's not right. That's not right. Why you allow this? I accuse him every morning. Why you allow this? I want to know why, why? You know all these questions, why, why? And I stop enjoying reading my Bible. I stop stop enjoying um, praying. I stop enjoying everything in my life. And I start having this attitude of, oh yes, killing the soldiers. Yes, beating them up. Yes, do this to them. All this hatred was moving me and it's overcome, overwhelming me. I can't stop that by myself. I, of course, in that time, none of my prayers was answered. Now, I, feel, I felt like I'm in the desert. Something not right, but I didn't know what it is. And everything got wrong, you know? And uh, I said, I can't, I can't live like this, I can't. So I can't go back to that place, I can't. I have, I have to do something. So I said, I want, I usually when I want something from God, I go away for one day for prayer and fasting and spending time with God. So I call one of the brothers uh, who are in Latrun, the mountain in Jerusalem. Anyway, I called him. I said, I need to go away for one day and I need to, keep, to be with God. So please, if you can take me, because in a curfew time, you can't travel. You can't go any place because you, you didn't know when they will announce curfew, when they will said, go home, don't move. Anyway, he came one day in the morning and took me to Latrun. So I went to that mountain and I told him, brother, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to eat. I just want to do business with God. So he said, okay, have your time. And I'm here when you need me. So I went, there's like forest, a mountain, there's trees. It's a beautiful place for devotion. So I went there, said, God, here I am. Talk to me. I want to know why you did this to me. I still accu accusing God for what happening. So I went. I start praising, worshiping. It's dryness. So I uh, I start praying. I start crying. I do. Uh, I was singing. I do everything in a loud voice. And I was going back and forth, back and forth, and and praying and asking God, please talk to me. Please talk to me. I want Him to come and talk to me, but. Nothing happened. And at least I get so tired 
and so dizzy, so I was on the floor. I said, God, please help me. Have mercy on me. I can't do, I can't go any, any further, you know. You have to come and speak to me. And in that minute, I saw that steps coming. I look, and that's the guy who was watching me from that place. He said, Sister, what's wrong with you? Why, why are you very upset and very nervous and all this? I said, no, go away from me. You didn't understand what I'm going through. He said, try me, try me. So I said, okay. I, I wasn't able to uh, talk anymore, but I told him, oh, the soldiers came, breaking my house, beating up my children. I was doing like, I was you know, angry when I was talking to him. Like, why happened to me? Why God allowed this to me? Why, why, why? So he said, then you are accusing God? I said, of course. He said, no, that's not God. God is lo God loves you, loves your children, and he never do this to you. Said, then who did this to us? He said, Satan. Because Satan, um, his plan from the beginning to, to bring you away from God. He tried to talk to you, but you can't hear him. And that's Satan's plan. I said, well, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. It's, so, so God still loves me? Yes, he, he do. He loves you, he loves your children. He will make everything right. Okay, so what I should do? I want his presence. I love Jesus. I told him that. I love Jesus and I want him back in my life. I want him, uh, I mean, I want to have back my relationship with him. I want to pray and he hears my prayer. I want his presence. I want his anointing back in my life. His joy, his peace. He said, well, if you want all this, you have to obey the word of God. He said to forgive your enemy and pray for them and bless the, the one who hurt you on this. I said, what? Forgive them? No, 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 no. I can't do that. He said, that's the only condition to come back to God through forgiveness. You have to forgive the soldiers who, who do this to your children and to you. And then... And that's obedient. And then ask God to help you. I said, no, I can't, I can't. They do this, that. I said, okay, okay, wait, wait. This is the word of God. You, it's your choice either to obey or not to obey. And whatever you want from God, you have to obey him first. I said, okay, but I can't. I can't, I'm a human. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I can't, I can't forgive the soldiers. He said, you try, you ask God to help you. So it's like a few minutes and I said, oh, uh, it's, it seems like when he speaks to me, it's like my heart was um, burning. Like, oh, he, he was telling me not, not words, it's like crema. It's something make you uh, believe immediately what he said, you know. So, okay, I will obey but I can't do it by myself. So help me to forgive these soldiers. And please God, help me, help me, help me. Then all the situation like turned around. And in that moment, when they was beating my children, I saw evil things in their eyes. I saw that spirit of killing, hatred, and I hate them because of that. You know, I saw that in their eyes. It's like occupied by Satan or something. They didn't want to do it, but they have to. They was forced to do it, either by uh, darkness power or by whatever spirits I didn't know. So then God showed me how they was miserable with doing this. They wasn't happy. They wasn't happy. They was, um, they was miserable. So I said, oh, God. Oh, bless them. Oh, forgive them. Forgive them, Lord Jesus. Forgive them. Now I see God's view of what all the situation, not the Satan's view. He was feeding my feeling of hatred and anger and blame God and all this. Anyway, I start praying for that soldiers. And I said, thank you. And I hold his hand. I went back. Change. My peace, and I immediately, I felt the presence of God again. I felt that peace again. I felt that joy again. 
the whole thing was changed. I went back, it was four o'clock and they will announce curfew soon. So I said, brothers, please, I, you take me home. He said, I said, by the way, uh, would you invite this guy to, for me to thank him? He said, what guy? He said, the guy was talking to me. He was there. I saw him. There's a, a tourist or something. There's a guy who was in, uh, in the place. He said, sister, I, we never had any visitors. There's none, no one in that place. I was talking to him. I saw him. He was watching me and he asked me what's wrong. And he explained to me how to get the presence of God back in my life. He said, oh, maybe that was an angel. Ah, yeah, maybe. So I felt so um, happy. I, I, I was so happy. I was so uh, thankful to God because it's, it's over. What I was going for, it's over. Now I'm a new person with God's love uh, filling my, my heart and my emotions with God's peace, with God's mercy. So since that time, I said, I, do, I did a vow, I will keep praying for that soldiers till God release me. So I kept maybe two or three years praying for them. Everywhere they go, I said, bless them. Uh, please, Jesus, meet with them. And uh, later I heard, I heard a lot of uh, um, reports about soldiers who was depressed, somebody was suicide, somebody went to the mental hospital because of what ha was happening through the uprising. I know they didn't want to do that. I know they was under some kind of spirits. That's why I felt sorry for them. And oh God, please help them. Please uh, touch their life, save their life, all these things. And in this way, I receive a blessing that my children was forgiven, the soldiers and their life was completely healed. It's that what stopped God from dealing with you, not him. You, we are the one who go away from God, not Him. We um, we go away from Him by our listening to the enemy. You know, like hatred and violence and uh, killing and bitterness and all this. So, if if you have, if you are facing these things, like um, you are away from God and you didn't have fellowship with Him, you didn't have His presence in li in your life. So you better check your heart, not God. And that's how he reconciled me, God, back to love the Jewish soldiers and people. And no enemy for me and, uh, since that, because we can't do any, we can't have any enemy with loving God. No way. You have to love your brother, which, which, which ways? Like Muslims, Jewish, any, anyone. If you love God, you have to love your brothers because that across God and people. Yes, of course, he's coming back. I hope so. <laughs> I'm waiting for him. We want everybody to get saved. We, we like everybody to get to know him and to get saved before his second coming because after that, there's no chances, you know. Yeah, yes, he's alive. I, I can witness that he's alive and he answer our prayers. He's there for us, helping us if we ask, when we ask him. And he's still waiting for anybody, if you want to ask him forgiveness, to get saved, everything. He is ready and waiting for you. Just go and ask him and you will be happy. <laughs>